Okay, we may get we may be getting lucky, guys. Don't hold your breath. Um, here we go. Let's let's hope this works. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get started. Um, let's see if this goes well. So let's jump in, guys. First of all, to single player, and actually let me get my. Uh, watch out because at this point we're definitely starting way late uh, i want to thank all you guys for showing up i'm so sorry about the technical difficulties let's hope that everything uh stays smooth throughout so we're gonna go ahead and jump into a sandbox battle right away guys um i already have basically my general picked out and since you guys wanted me to play uh, as the british i'm gonna go ahead and take major general frederick frederick adam actually uh in this case um and i am gonna do just a basic brigade battle here in the beginning uh, so let's launch the sandbox game. Let's hope everything goes well, uh, and hopefully we won't have any more of these issues in future streams. I uh, really apologize for that. I don't like to disappoint you guys, and I'm hoping that I don't disappoint you here. Let's hope everything works. Uh, so if you guys are seeing the battle, beautiful. Here we go, guys. We are starting off, obviously, in a brigade battle, and I wanted to take this very open terrain so that we could actually see what's going on, essentially. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and move up here. Uh, with the general um, actually I've taken the wrong general and I like to move in a sort of line formation call me old-fashioned But I like to go ahead and have these guys spread out in a line and it looks like we don't only have Brits in this battle We may have some men from the German city-states of Nassau um, I'm not sure but it certainly looks like them in fact. Let's take a look here. Actually. No, I'm wrong This is a the third light brigade. All right. We're directed to defend this area uh, And by the way guys make sure to let me know if you guys are seeing anything here uh, and yes, thank you, Barold. That was what did it. That was certainly what did it. The sacrificial goat. Um, and, uh, so this is very cool that we could actually get started. If you guys, are and by the way, welcome everybody. Um, I'm gl thank you for staying with me. We, we started with 20. There's still 21 here. You guys rock. I must say that you guys are absolutely awesome for sticking through with me, uh, on this. Uh, believe me, working with me, uh, it certainly helps. So we've also got some Highlanders here, and I am tempted, really tempted to use those Highlanders. Um, we're obviously just moving up at the brigade level, and these men are itching to fight, of course. Um, constantly moving up. All right, here we go. I gotta make sure not to keep my generals too far out in front. One thing I absolutely love about Scourge of War Waterloo is that your generals can get killed. Um, I think I've had Admiral Ney get killed before. Uh, it's just not something you want to happen. So in this case, we have to be a little careful, and I more or less have an idea of what I want to do in this battle against the French. Uh, I was initially going to actually run to the battlefield just to get into position quickly, but I think I'm going to stay back on that, and I'm just going to play this very safely. I'm going to take my uh, actual Highlanders over here, and these Highlanders are going to have a very important role in this battle, and that is to sort of create... Uh, a right side flank on the enemy's line here. So we're going to bring the rest of our guys up, sort of create just a frontal line, a basic frontal line, uh, and these Highlanders are going to go off on the side and try to cause way more damage to the enemy. So let's go ahead and grab our general. I don't want our general getting shot, although I think he's pretty safe here. Um, just looking through the woods here at what the enemy has to offer. Luckily, there's no artillery in this battle. We don't have to worry about that. Uh, that obviously causes me a lot of problems. Um, and the enemy's actually breaking off here. This is a little scary. They're breaking off into two sections. They've left one infantry section here on the right side and one over there on the left. Um, I don't like that at all. I like it when they stay together, uh, but we can deal with that. And I think what we'll do is we won't take the bait. We'll try to actually just keep focusing on the guys here on the left and just keep a cautionary eye on the guys on the right. In fact, we may let our Highlanders deal with them entirely. Uh, let's actually move them a little bit more like this. Uh, I think it's probably time to move our generals back. There's no need to have them out in the front line. And actually, as you can see, the generals um, actually have sort of an idea of what to do in this case. Uh, they, they tend to sort of go back uh, of their own accord, although not always, especially not enemy generals. All right, with these guys, I am going to move up quickly. I went against my own tactics and decided that, yes, I will move up quickly just because I want to go ahead and uh, I don't want to give the enemy too much time to think here. I, I want to go ahead and engage them in battle, and I want to do it quickly. Uh, let's stop over here with these guys. All right, we're supposed to move on the indicated location, of course, uh, deal some damage to the enemy. So what we're going to try to do, and um, I'm sort of taking the enemy's bait, which worries me, but I'm going to try to smash the enemies over here on this side. Uh, there are obviously two brigades of infantry there, not really prepared for a fight either. Um, and it looks like our Highlanders are getting prepared for battle. Not quite close enough to engage, but we're going to get them up close. Come on, boys. First volley of the fight should come from the Highlanders. 
There we go. We're ready to get started, guys. Um, we're going to go ahead and open fire with our Highlanders. I'll actually do a volley fire because I want them to get a nice chunk of fire uh, from our guys. So we're going to go ahead and... Why are they going into a box formation? Oh, okay. That's just a line. It looked like a box for a second. And boom! Crackling shot there. Worked out pretty well. Uh, and now we, of course, want to jump back here uh, to these guys. And I want to make sure that they're also able to open fire on the enemy here. So let's make sure. We could also turn to the left and face the enemy on this side. Just let the Highlanders deal with these two brigades. But I'm not sure that's a great idea. Um, then again, we've got these uh, Regiment of Foot, the Light Brigade, to assist us. So let's actually put them over here. And let's consider bringing these guys to reinforce our left. Uh, so we're going to go ahead, actually, and... There we go. Okay, the battle has begun. It looks like our Highlanders are getting some great shots off. And you can certainly see a lot of French down on the field already at the very beginning of the battle. Um, our Highlanders are doing great here. If anybody has some tips, advice, whatever you want to share tactics-wise, feel free. We're always willing to try new things. Um, seems to be fun, and uh, it seems to work sometimes. Uh, so, okay, actually now I'm sort of tempted to turn these guys over to the right flank. I don't like that the uh, that they're not really shooting at these guys, uh, but we are more or less doing a pretty good job on the men over here. Let's see. Alright, I want to take a look here at our left. Oh, I don't like that these guys constantly are moving. Um, and as you can see, the French are getting into position here. So, we're going to go ahead and actually just want these guys to stay Let's in a very, see. very defensive position. Alright, I'm going to take a look here at our left. Oh, I don't like that these guys constantly are moving. Um, and as you can see, the French are getting into position here. So, we're going to go ahead and... Alright, so look at that. Now the French seem to actually be reacting to us. Uh, especially to our light oh, foot. Right. Are not not fire oh, I don't like that these guys are constantly are moving. And I'm wondering, what do you guys think? Uh, are, who are you guys putting money on for this battle, I wonder? Not sure if I can't see the chat screen or if everybody's just extremely quiet. Alright, here we go, guys. Let's take a look at how our light footmen are doing. Um, of course, this is not a brigade with that many men in it, but they seem to be great shots. And that's what counts. And as you can see, we're whittling away at this French line here. Uh, that's what I want. If we can whittle away at these guys little by little, we have a good chance that we can win. Unfortunately, right now, these guys are pretty well prepared on the left here. Um, I don't like that our men are constantly looking to aim at another brigade. We want to go ahead and get them wheeled all the way over. Come on, boys. Come on. There we go. I don't know why these guys are going so far. And turn, turn. And how are the Highlanders? All right, look at that. The enemy is right up on us. Um, it looks like they actually managed to push back our Highlanders, although I don't think the Highlanders are, are necessarily doing bad in terms of morale. That may have just been uh, sort, sort of an opportunist retreat. Um, and I actually want the Highlanders aiming at these guys. So we're going to move them up a bit. And look at this. Are our men deciding to charge? You better not charge without my permission. Right, they're sort of focusing on the guys over there on the left side. Not necessarily a bad thing, uh, but I really want to make sure that these enemies are finished. And there we go. Whoa! Looks like actually it's a French charge, um, unless my men just decided to take the initiative there on their own. Um, and this is some true bayonet combat here. Uh, it's going to get pretty dirty. And I'm actually thinking I may go ahead and charge with the Highlanders uh, just to make sure that we beat these guys. And in fact, that's what I'm going to do. Um, if they, they would let me charge with the Highlanders, it looks like they're not going to. Um, but we did manage to make the French pull back. That is a definite victory, uh, at least on that front, right? So we're going to go ahead and pull these guys back. I like that the Highlanders immediately uh, are now aiming at the enemy over here. They could probably put up a great fight. And we can now assist at defeating the rest of these guys. And no, I need you guys in a better position than that. Come on, boys. You can do better than that. We'll go ahead and put them back in a line position. Um, it seems to work out pretty well. Okay, awesome. 4K resolution. I crashed my game when I hooked up my TV as external monitor. <laughs> Not sure. That's a uh, that's a interesting thing. Uh, yeah, that would be incredible. Yes, the killed party commissar of the Highlanders. I think like right now the Highlanders are doing great. Although I don't think that they're not. I don't like that they're not taking this uh, 
French Brigade very seriously. They're kind of just like, ah, whatever. They're too weak. They can't do anything to us. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure that our light foot are also advancing, because I want to keep putting pressure on this right side. Uh, and let's pop over here to the left. Beautiful. Our men are holding out pretty well. I kind of want to move my general back here for some better morale. Uh, but right now, I mean, I'm almost scared to move him. Uh, we are fighting with uh, Major General Frederick Adam, of course. And I think I will move him a little closer behind these men. I'm not too worried about our Highlanders. I'm not too worried about our Light Brigade. We may very well charge with the Highlanders. If you guys think it's safe to charge this area right now, let me know in the comments down below. And we will definitely consider doing that. Uh, it's probably not necessarily a very bad idea. Uh, but I'd like to actually wait for the enemy to start switch, uh, switching formations before I do a charge. I notice that tends to work out a lot better. Okay, not good. Looks like our poor boys in the Oxfordshire Regiment are pulling back. Um, and I may actually have them just assist uh, my Highlanders in defeating the enemy over here. It looks like my Highlanders are actually out of range once again. Let's try to move up. And actually, I'll halt there. I just want to get in range with the enemy. That's all I really care about. In fact, we'll give them a nice volley shot. Uh, give them a, just a nice chunk of lead. Really let them know that we are not here to mess around. And let's go. Boom! Beautiful. I, I know you guys saw those guys falling in the background. That was awesome. Uh, we've got these guys in a decent line over here. I just want to make sure we're careful. And what is this French general doing in our lines? It looks like Baron Charles Francois Bourgeois just went into our lines for no reason. Um, and I'm actually amazed. I'm really impressed, too, by the way. Uh, for those of you, any of you guys that know about history, uh, the 3rd Light Brigade, uh, 5th British Infantry Division, is doing incredibly well. They're managing to hold off basically three entire French brigades, and they're not losing many men. As you can see, our casualties are minimal uh, compared to the enemy. That's pretty awesome. I just want to make sure that we are not getting overconfident uh, and that we're holding off the rest of the enemy. And of course, uh, with me, guys, what I like to do after battles, I like to go ahead and view the entire battlefield. I like to look at every single casualty. So after this battle, uh, believe me, there will be a viewing of the Ted, as it were. Exactly. That's class. That shows class, Party Commissar. Why don't we have that in battlefields these days? That was very <laughs> classy. <laughs> yes, of course, it's a gentleman's fight. Alright, there we go. Look at how we're breaking these lines, guys. So right now, these two French lines are withering away. Um, and I've got to give it to the Highlanders. I mean, they have done so well at holding the right flank over here as well. We could take a look at what's going on over there. But in general, I'm not really actually charging, uh, primarily just because... I want to basically finish these guys off with muskets. If I charge and lose that charge, I doubt we're going to be able to win the battle. You know, despite the fact that we're doing well right now, we only have three brigades. That's all we can spare. Uh, and once they run out, well, and the tiny fourth over here, um, once they run out, we're shit out of luck, to put it simply. Now, I am thinking I should maybe charge with the Highlanders. I'm pretty confident we would win that charge, but I don't see the point in doing it, because uh, if we have the upper hand on the actual battlefield here, just with our muskets, we might just want to stay put uh, and remain in this comfortable position. Let's take a look and see what the French are seeing from their perspective. I always like to see what the enemy is seeing. Uh, and yeah, wow. Alright, I would not want to be the enemy right now. Uh, constant shots coming from my line, and it looks like we're maybe at, let's say, 20 feet away, maybe 10 feet. This is very, very, very close. Uh, and I'm guessing, for those of you that are more gun buffs, etc., I'm not huge. I, I love guns, but don't know much about muskets and these sort of things. I'm wondering if a close-range musket shot uh, would be far more devastating than a far-range one. I'm, ass I'm assuming it probably would, uh, depending on the circumstance. Alright, here we go. Uh, look, the French general is coming again. He has returned. Uh, Francois Bourgeois. And uh, I hope our men don't shoot him. He's been a good soldier. He's been a, a good general. You know, our men didn't shoot him when he came to our lines, uh, as party comics are mentioned. And uh, maybe, maybe we should keep him around. Who knows? When we destroy the Grand Armée, uh, maybe we'll need some generals for our own Englishmen. Oh no, I didn't want to do that. And thankfully, I can take that away. Uh, there we go. A lot of men dropping on both sides. And now this might be where I change my tactics up a little bit. Uh, our Highlanders can still hold that line, but we want to keep moving forward with these men. Uh, and I'm going to make it a quick move. 
and I'm going to do the same over here with my Highlanders. So we're going to bring the Highlanders to the main battle here, and we're also going to quick move with them. Uh, since we've already been through a lot in this battle, I think it's probably okay to go ahead and waste some of their stamina by quick moving. Uh, we'll keep the Light Brigade over here, the, the Rifles, the 3rd Light Brigade, to watch the enemy over here on the right flank. Come on, boys, get into position. Alright, the Highlanders are getting into position, but they're really taking their time. There we go, guys. We've got a French Brigade running. Wonderful. Uh, it looks like the General is now directly in our line of fire. Be awesome to get a shot on him, although I don't expect that to happen. And now the enemy will be bringing up their reserves. One of the things that's interesting about the 105M de Ligne, 2nd Battalion, uh, is that they've actually been sort of in the back there waiting their turn for the rest of the battle. But one major part of Scorch of War Waterloo is being fresh on the field. If you've got fresh troops, there's a good chance you're going to do very well. By the way, just look at how damn well our men have been shooting in this area. The Oxfordshire Regiment of the Light Brigade uh, is just absolutely annihilating these Frenchmen over here. It's actually almost kind of sad to watch. There we go. All right, there we go. They're, they're faltering a little bit. It might be time for a grand charge. What do you guys think? I think it's risky, but you know what? The greatest generals had to take the risk, right, guys? So here we go. Glorious charge, men! Kill the French! Well, take them prisoner of their friend, of course. Go ahead and see if we can crush them here. Um, and they look pretty confident despite not having many men. Believe me, you can definitely lose a charge uh, just based on lack of stamina, etc. Uh, or just lack of morale. So I'm hoping that our guys can kill the enemy here. Looks like we've lost 320 men in this unit, but we killed 454. And here we go. Uh, this is the true test of fate. Whether or not our men can hold up against a French line. And there we go. Oh, it's getting nasty. The general is coming to actually try and reinforce the French line. Um, and there we go, we managed to make them run. Not bad, guys. Uh, we actually took a general prisoner, not just a regular old... Actually, we killed him! We killed the general! <laughs> That's just mean! We were gonna take a general prisoner, but I suppose my men decided that it was better to just kill him. Fair enough. Uh, we took all these guys prisoners, so that was a worthwhile charge. And that's making me a little more confident to try out, um, sort of a different charge here. Let's bring these guys up and possibly charge with our Highlanders. Let's move up. Remember, the Highlanders are magnificent at the frontal assault. Just want to make sure that we don't have those Frenchmen anywhere in our vicinity. It looks like we still do, uh, and these light footmen aren't really doing much to them. So we're going to move these guys up. All right, beautiful. Once again, whittling away the enemy. Uh, and right now, it's almost just a matter of time um, until we take the field. Considering actually just doing a regular old charge, we'd probably manage, uh, but it's it's kind of throwing all of our eggs in one basket. But you know what? Just make sure that the general is supporting us in this charge. As long as the general is running with us, I'll feel a little more confident. So let's start moving the general up here, uh, kind of close to the front lines. I'm not going to rush him. I'm just going to start slowly moving him. Love these views from the line. This is wonderful. I think, uh, without a doubt, Scourge of War Waterloo does the best job at showing sort of a real um, Napoleonic era battlefield. Uh, just the amount of bodies you can see, the beautiful line fire, the amazing uniforms of the men. Uh, it just seems like every single man uh, is his own general here. And there we go. We're really dropping these guys like flies. The French are not holding up very well to the British fusillade, and we are cutting them like grass. Uh, at this point, you can see we've got a sort of concave attack here where we're sort of closing them into a sort of pincer. Of, um, and I'm thinking we could go ahead and charge with both sides of the pincer and move up. But look at that. The enemies are already retreating. And all we have to do is keep moving forward uh, towards the next enemy and just whittle them down. As you can see, this guy is not just pulling back, but he is truly retreating entirely. And we want to keep moving up with the rest of our men. Let's go. 
going on over here? Alright. That's interesting. I'm gonna go take a look at the light brigade. Something weird seems to be going. They seem to be firing, but the enemy does not seem to be returning fire. Which I have no problem with, to be quite honest with you, but uh, it is a bit strange. Yeah, the enemy's turned away. Uh, so we're getting free shots on the enemy right now, which is pretty awesome. And I'll actually go ahead and switch to volley fire. It might as well, so they can get some really powerful shots there. Okay, there we go. Maybe we can make this regiment of foot uh, the heroes of this battle and have them charge. You know what? We're going to try it, guys. Charging with the regiment of foot here. Can they break the French line? Not necessarily, but we're going to at least weaken it. Two arms, men! Two arms! Alright, wonderful guys. The battle has started. I love these close combat scenes. Um, and is that, is it possible? Are the French running? Wow, it looks like our men may have taken the field. Wonderful, and there we go. Are we going to be firing some muskets into French backs? I can only assume the answer is yes. We'll go ahead and line up and start shooting again. Looks like the French are totally pulling back. And at this point, I just want to make sure that we have all the victory points we need to take. This victory point over here uh, seems to have nobody on it. And I don't know why that is, because it should have already given us the victory point. We should have already taken it. Uh, but for some reason, it didn't give it to us. So we're going to see what's going on. We don't want to lose this battle just because we quit too early. Let's pop over here. And in fact, we'll bring these guys over, the Highlanders, to finish off the enemy. Look at the carnage here, guys. Wow. We certainly lost a lot of redcoats um, defending this tiny grassland from the French. But... Uh, we also killed a ton of French, and uh, you can see here the results of the battlefield are absolutely grotesque. Uh, just blood everywhere, gore. There's no idea if medics are going to be able to help these men. I certainly hope some of them can have their limbs reattached, but a lot of them are not going to do well. And as you can see, our heroes, and I'm calling them our heroes for a reason, uh, in the 3rd Light Brigade, they lost a lot of men here. You can see there, the general's just kind of standing over the men like, I don't care, these are peasants, I could care less. They fought for their general. And for their king. But anyway, if you could see here, I mean, they definitely put up a brave fight. Um, just a ton of men going down. Of course, they took out a lot more of the enemy than they lost. And if we want to take a look directly here, it looks like, actually, let's take a look here. We killed 533 enemy just with the Light Brigade and lost 371 men. Uh, and 371 men is not an easy loss to take. And there we go. I knew that was going to happen. That's what I was worried about. You see the French over there have reformed. We've got to finish them off. We can't let them just reform whenever they feel like it. So we're going to move up here. Uh, in fact, I will go ahead and fast move. Got to love that trumpet. All right, our Highlanders are approaching the enemy at this next location, guys. We're going to move up. And we'll once again run. I'll likely start firing as soon as I get into range. Wow, Barreled, I actually didn't know that. That's really cool. And I'm guessing um, I'm more familiar with Civil War casualties using the mini ball, which really wasn't a ball at all. It was more of a, I guess, a modern-day cartridge. Um, but I'm wondering how the musket round, uh, how the round musket round would affect uh, human flesh, if it would still cause some serious damage. I'm sure it would but I'm wondering what kind of damage that would be. I'm guessing more blunt force trauma, uh, certainly puncture wounds, but with a lot of broken bones. There we go. Okay. Well, these men are not firing on the French. I don't know why. They seem to have a perfect line of sight, but we'll move them up a little bit more. Our men are growing nearsighted, it seems. All right, here we go, guys, approaching the French line once again. We may also just bring in our guys and go for another charge. I think one more charge will wipe these guys off the map. Uh, let's take a look over there. Our Highlanders. Of course, our Highlanders are... Look at... I would not want to be facing the Highlanders right now. Look at how many the enemy has to face here. Um, and right now, they're in volley fire mode, so that's why they're kind of holding now. 
and they're just going to deliver a devastating shot there. Boom, as you can see. Uh, actually, most of those rounds missed. They got a little unlucky here, and I'm just hoping we can hit the enemy ammo train. Um, that would be fun. Hit their little supply car. As you can see, the enemy general was quite confident. He's standing right here just to show his men, we can do it, boys. We can defeat these Brits. But it's not going to happen. I don't think so anyway. And there we go. He's finally going to take cover. Might be a little too late for him. He's certainly ducking and dodging a lot of shots here. All right, here we go, guys. Place your bets. Does the general get hit or not? Come on, boys. You can do it. There's no shame in shooting a general, I promise. Especially these French. Oh, Olivia's going to hate that. <laughs> here we go. We'll pop back here. Um, actually, when I was speaking to Olivia, uh, we generally like to talk to the four streams. So we were, uh, I was initially going to do the French, but... Uh, since the first person on the stream suggested we do the British, he won it. We are doing, we are playing as the Brits. Um, if you guys want to see the French for the next time we play, that would be awesome. Um, and once again, guys, a very special thank you to those of you that are sticking around, because believe me, um, it is an extreme pain to start a stream and not be able to figure out what's going on. I'm really glad I stuck with it and we got it to work. Makes me at least slightly happy. Um... And I think we more or less have won. Um, I'm going to make sure just by taking the rest of these positions. And actually, I'm going to advance up here to this position. But I don't even think that's necessary, really. All right, Major General Frederick Adam, you're hereby directed to defend the indicated positions. Ah, okay, fair enough. Um, let's take a look. And so I guess all we need to do, I'm going to go ahead and let my guys get into position. In the meantime, we'll go ahead and take a nice little tour of the battlefield. Uh, of course, the main area here where the charge took place. We've got a few Highlanders down over here, which is never fun to see. Uh, but in general, a lot of Frenchmen down. I must say that I think in this battle, our men absolutely were more accurate in their shooting than the enemy. Uh, and despite sort of hectic uh, movements towards the beginning... Uh, people are mentioning the dance party going on. We actually managed to make these guys fall back. So I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm going to push these positions. But in general, I think the battle is ours. Yes, Barold, I would, I would imagine so. Yeah, that's what I would be thinking, Party Commissar. I was thinking more like a, a definite bone breaker, uh, whereas the mini ball would kind of, I mean, it would do severe damage internally, but it would sort of pass through you. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that the musket ball would kind of hit a bone and just crush everything in that area. All right, here we go. Let's take a look. I don't know. I think we've won. Certainly looks like we have by the by the looks of the battlefield, uh, but I'm wondering if we have to take that position. Forward, men again. The French still have some men here. They haven't entirely retreated, so that's another concern. Okay, guys, I think this is it. I think we got it. So I'm going to go ahead. I am going to end battle. Let's cross our fingers. And victory! Wonderful! A fierce combat had resulted in our force of the enemy met near the town of Waterloo. The fields and woodlots near the town responded from the roar of cannon, the blast of shell, and the rattle of musketry. The lines of battle swept back and forth, and attack met attack. Our soldiers inflicted significant losses on the enemy and both killed and captured. They have retreated to strong positions, and the battle may resume tomorrow. I am actually saving the replay. Uh, because I plan to upload this later. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and return to the actual screen, or I should say return to the main screen here. Um, and we did start this stream late, so I'm going to go ahead and just keep going here uh, until probably about 3. Uh, and I think what I'll do, I don't think we have enough time for an entirely new battle, but what I can do is I can go ahead and show you guys a much larger battle, uh, maybe something we can try next time. And hopefully next time we can get more people in the stream, because that initial 15 minutes where I totally lost you guys, uh, definitely lost some viewers, and that sucks. Uh, so let's jump in here to Sandbox. I'm going to jump to uh, Core versus Core. I can't deal with armies yet. Uh, way too difficult. And I'm actually going to select the French. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and try to select a Core Commander. Um, General Division Comte d'Antoine Dois. 
Uh, what about Marshal de Camberon Jean Martin Petit? Uh, and let's go ahead and launch our game. We want core versus core. No, we don't want core versus core. Yes, we do. Okay, fair enough. Let's launch our sandbox game, and at least we can get a quick look, guys, at the scale here of these battles. This is not even the biggest battle. This is the third, uh, or I should say three quarters of the biggest battle, um, and I'm sure you can make even larger battles outside of that. So we're going to go ahead and take a look here and see what I'm dealing with. Wow! Wow! <laughs> okay! Uh, yeah, that's pretty crazy. So there we go, guys. Look at that. I mean, having that much control is almost a bit frightening. But uh, we're going to go ahead and start moving up. Why not? Of course, I'm going to do my tried and true line method. I always like to keep my guys in a sort of line. Uh, I don't think I control the artillery in this battle, although I might. Let's see. No, I don't control the artillery. Fair enough. Uh, so we're ordered to attack the indicated position in this case. Um, and since this is going to qu be a quick battle, what I might do for you guys is show you guys a Napoleonic charge uh, in all its glory once we get on the line. Uh, whether or not it fails or succeeds, it'll be fun to go ahead and see how it works. Of course, I think what we have ahead of us are uh, cavalry units. And if that's the case, we're probably not going to be doing that charge. But as you can see already, our cannon shot is killing a lot of the enemy cavalry. Of course, do not like those exploding shells at all. Uh, and they're definitely causing some trouble. And I'm guessing that is shell shot. Maybe wrong, but I think it looks like shell shot to me. Uh, let's take a look here. All right, our men are advancing beautifully here. Yes, that is definitely true, Josh. Um, I would not say I am nearly skilled enough to do that right now. Uh, there's also, I believe, binocular view. Um, maybe you incorrect about this. I think there is. Let me take a look. Uh, visible enemy. I recall seeing something like the binocular view where you could get a sort of a first-person look. Uh, but I'll need to sort of do my research on it. But yes, that is definitely possible. And, of course, we're at the core level. We could try and play at the army level, which would mean we wouldn't just be commanding these guys. We'd be commanding all of these guys. All of these guys. I mean, it would be a massive, massive battle. Uh, so hopefully if we're a little more or a little luckier in our next stream uh, and I can get it working right away, we can go ahead and try one of those major large army battles. Although for that, I would definitely need your guys' help your assistance and uh, just your, your tactical advice because that would be a major major game yeah I had always heard something like that that um Confederacy generally had a, a wide array of different weapons. Um, but I think as far as I know, I may be wrong about this, I actually had uh, somebody on, on my channel, Agrippa Maxenius, uh, start a debate, and I mentioned something about muskets being um, in the Civil War. And they said, well, they weren't muskets, they were rifles. Well, I think that there is such a thing as a rifled musket. Um, you know, this is essentially a breech-loaded rifle, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but instead of loading in a actual round ball, you're loading in an actual shell or cartridge. Um, again, I'm not an expert on guns, so I may be wrong on this, but as far as I know, a musket and a rifle, um, obviously a rifle is different than a musket, but there is such a thing as a rifled musket, uh, which is essentially what would be used in that time. Yes, Barreled. I would love to do something on that scale. Um, right now, you know, we're just doing this quick stream sort of on the brigade level, division level. Uh, but that is definitely something that I'd consider doing. The problem would be, of course, if I did a stream like that, exactly, it would have to be much longer than a 45-minute stream. It would have to be uh, maybe at the least four or five hours. Uh, and I would need a lot of Red Bull, a whole lot of Red Bull. And no, I'm not being sponsored by Red Bull. Uh, if Slytherin made an energy drink, I would definitely, I would support that. 
<laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look here. All right, so we're getting close. Um, and as you can see, we're, we're really not doing much just because the enemy has cavalry here in the front. Um, but I'm just showing you guys the actual massive, massive size of these battlefields. And I'll just jump over here to the enemy lines to see what they're planning. Uh, but as you can see, this, this would take a long time. And this is just on the core level, uh, which is not even the largest one. Here we go. Wow. How did... Look at those poor guys. <laughs> they got an unlucky shell. Wonderful. Alright, so ideally in this position, um, I would obviously go ahead and basically start moving my army up. Um, you can't can't just be paused or, or stopped by a cavalry division. I've done it before and uh, I've lost the battle just because time ran out. Like, you've got to keep pushing. Uh, and if you've got to get into that box formation, generally the guys do it on their own, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, but I think it would probably be a, add a little extra added uh, layer of realism if I actually had to order uh, the square formation every single time. I don't see, that doesn't seem to be the case. Oh, that's a nasty shot. Right, tremendous, tremendous stuff coming from us. Uh, let's keep moving up forward. I don't know why these guys are stopping when they don't yet have a beat on the enemy. That's just not cool. Let's see if we can coax them into a charge. Alright, here we go. Uh, the enemy is definitely getting closer for sure. Um, Probably time to get into the square formation. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, let's get into square formation. Same with these guys. The enemy's definitely going for a nice little charge there, but we're going to lead them into a false sense of security and uh, waste them. Uh, let's make sure that our general is back, though. We don't want him getting killed. Put him back here. In fact, we could put him inside the square, which seems to be a pretty good place. Uh, there we go. Already dropping some enemy cavalry. Right, these guys are already in the square, so are these guys. As you can see, our men more or less know what to do in these situations. Come on, boys. Vive la France. Attack. All right, here we go, guys. We're going to try and pull on a charge on cavalry. I've never actually tried it. Uh, but the problem is we need to get out of square formation to be able to. So I'm going to try to go ahead. Here we go, guys. Charge on cavalry. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And, of course, the cavalry is actually going to run. That's quite hilarious. Um, are they running? It looks like they've drawn their swords. Oh, okay, they definitely are running. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so this may be a new tactic. I may need to start pushing cavalry up like this with charges um, and take the fight to them. Because, see, if we can get, like, an infantry unit in between all these cavalry into a square formation, we're going to do a lot better. Go ahead. Uh, maybe we can stop there. It's good enough. You've done enough, men. I said you've done enough. Oh, they're they're war crazy. They must charge. We'll go ahead and get them into a box formation. But they're not stopping their charge, which is pretty funny. Uh, despite my my orders to stop, they are not stopping that charge. Stop, boys, stop. But nope, they're going to continue. Here we go, guys. Bayonets versus cavalry with a uh, very, very nasty sword. In fact, if anybody knows what swords they're using, I think it's a saber. Uh, let me know down below. But definitely not something you want uh, you know, slashed across your chest, uh, stomach, etc. It's probably not going to result in a very good uh, outcome, to be honest with you. But there we go. I'm actually surprised my men were brave enough to continue the fight against the cavalry. Usually when I charge a cavalry unit, my men take off running immediately. Uh, and right now, they seem to be putting up a pretty nice little fight here. Here we go. Come on, boys. You can do it. There we go. Wow, guys. We've got the enemy cavalry on the run. Um, of course, if you know anything about me, I'm immediately going to get into formation to start shooting them in the back. Uh, because I am such a respectful foe, etc. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there we go. So that's definitely an idea on dealing with cavalry. But uh, like I said, I just wanted to show you guys the scale. Uh, we are definitely approaching the end of the stream here. And uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, advice... Etc. Uh, make sure to leave that stuff down below. Uh, but as you can see, that that charge was not without a lot of casualties. We lost many men.
Sorry about that, guys. Had a little mic issue. Uh, yeah, if anybody has any questions regarding the stream or uh, any updates, anything you want to know, uh, feel free to ask me down below. And again, thank you so much, guys, for uh, sticking it through and uh, being able to bear with me. I think uh, next time I do Scourge of War Waterloo here on stream, I'm going to go ahead and try to start a lot earlier, like 15 minutes early, because the main issue was were just frame rate drops, which I was kind of surprised. Um, but this is a huge game, so it kind of makes sense. Thanks, Joshua. Um... Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Um, I'm actually just a streamer. Um, I, I can't say. I guess you could call me a, a Slytherin associate. Um, I have no, absolutely no, no ability to comment on the on development of games, but uh, I will definitely pass that along. Thanks, self searcher. I appreciate that, man. And party commissar, definitely, definitely. That's that's one of the games I sort of just play when I'm uh, just want to be mindless and just have fun. Another goat? Oh, dear. Yes, of course. And uh, I must do the mandatory... Uh, of course, I'm so great at this. Uh, I like to call it just uh, a shameless plug. And my shameless plug will be my channel. So if you guys like games like Scourge of War, Waterloo, etc., head here, please. Um, through some of the first videos, if you just check out my recent videos, you'll also get a link to my Twitch uh, channel, and I'm trying to get that started up, but right now I'm really working with Slytherin. Um, it really just seems to be a lot more doable for me sort of once a week, uh, but I will start getting a more regular uh, sort of schedule on my channel as well so that you guys get to see these games more regularly, um, and uh, that would be awesome. Thank you, Josh. Let them know. Let them know. They If, if they hear it, that's good. <laughs> Thank you, Party Commissar. And uh, again, thank you, everybody that showed up. Uh, very sorry for the technical difficulties in the first 15 minutes of the stream. Um, like I said, we're going to try to make that never happen again. Uh, and I'm really glad we were able to continue with, through with it. And it seems like we had a pretty decent stream. You guys uh, were great. I love the conversation uh, in the chat box. I always like talking about these sort of historical facts, uh, muskets, etc., you know, charges, why people fought in this era, how they could possibly fight in these extremely dangerous lines where it's almost like just Russian roulette uh, in, in the sense of you're standing on a line and one of those bullets is more than likely going to hit you. Um, Thank you, Self Searcher. Uh, Josh, the channel is here. Um, give you the link right there. And uh, basically, uh, I do entirely strategy games. Uh, that's that's really almost everything I do. Uh, occasionally, I'll play something silly like uh, Don't Starve or uh, trying to think. Uh, I started playing, um, oh, what's the name of that game? Pillars of Eternity, uh, which uh, is kind of cool. But yeah, I need as many viewers as I can get, guys. The strategy community must go on! The more viewers I get, you know, the more people get into strategy, the more our entire strategy group succeeds, and we all win in the end. Alright, guys, thank you again. I uh, really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Uh, and uh, I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome day. Uh, make sure that if you're going to be playing some Scourge of War, be careful. Uh, don't be reckless with your charges like me. I got very lucky there getting, uh, actually winning those charges. I'll be quite honest with you. I lose a lot of battles in uh, Scourge of War Waterloo just by charging and basically having to surrender because my men just immediately give up. So we got very lucky on those battles uh, and actually did pretty well. Uh, and maybe next time we'll do a battle with a larger group. So we'll maybe do a core level battle where we actually have to uh, deal with a huge, huge army like you guys saw there at the end. Thank you so much for stopping by, guys. You're awesome. Take care and have an awesome, awesome day.